Your resume is looking a little bit empty and we know what you need to do is add some form of data engineering project to it. But where in the world do you even begin? Welcome back everyone. Before you click like or subscribe or anything else on this channel, give me a few moments just to explain what the goal is of this video and hopefully provide some value for people out there who are interested in the field of data engineering or just data in general, because the focus of this video will be to create a data engineering project that kind of goes from end to end. So we're going to create something by gathering data from multiple data sources, create some sort of data storage system, whether that be a data warehouse or something similar. Uh, there will be some sort of ingestion component. Uh, I'm still going to play around with some of the ideas in terms of what those will be, as well as creating some sort of uh, SQL transformation layer, probably, and the data visualization layer. And so this whole thing will be created over the next few weeks. We're going to start again with the data sources and setting up some sort of project plan. And then from there, do the ingestion. And then from there, do the storage and so on and so forth. But before we do anything, and I think this is something you should all do, right? Before you write or commit to any project, you should probably look at what data sources exist out there and what you can actually work with. And what's really great is we live in a time where data is so accessible. Maybe you'll have to pay for it, but it is very accessible through APIs, through various kind of free sources. The government data sets tend to be very open and there are just so many options. So it's very easy, honestly, to create some sort of project. There's just so much out there. And so before you like write down a clear plan of what you wanna do, take some time and go look at different data sources. That's gonna be the focus of this video. We're gonna look at some different data source opportunities that you can find and use yourselves for the project. And you can think of this video as kind of video zero, right? Like starting in the array, this is video zero. You need to just do some initial research into what kind of actual data exists that you want to use. And let's do that before we commit. And then in video one, we'll kind of work on actually looking at the data and exploring it and figuring out how to pull it out. This will again be a longer series and I hope it's something that inspires you to create your own data project. If you have anything in particular you'd like to see like tool wise, please let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna be poking around with a few. So this is again, just another opportunity for you and me to just learn about other tools that maybe we're not using a lot or maybe we've only used in the past, whatever it might be. Projects are not just meant, I think, to be focused purely on trying to get a project onto your resume. It's a great chance for you to learn. And so anyways, before I ramble too far, let's get into some of the different data sources you can pull, again, both for free and in some cases, there will be some paid monthly subscriptions, but as an opportunity for you to just learn how to pull this information because that's what you will be doing in your job anyways. So without further ado, let's drill into these different data sources. So in order to go through these different sources, you guys are actually going to get to see an article that I haven't even published, which is based on the same topic essentially, which is different data sources that we can use. Again, we're gonna see some free data sources and as well as some projects that people have put together, all focused around different areas of data. So in this first data source, you'll find San Francisco's open data API. And what I really liked here is there was actually someone that decided to take this to the next level in terms of actually making this again into a project. We're really only going to focus on the data, but I really like that they actually took this data and developed some sort of data warehouse structure to it. So thank you so much, Ilya. It's very kind of you to do this for us. And I'll have the link below so you can find this, but they ended up uh, kind of sharing the overall structure that they created here you'll see that they did end up trying to use the classic kind of star schema model uh, in Kimball. In fact, if you go to their project on GitHub, you'll see that they actually took the time to really explain why they did what they did. You know, like they, they had this issue here with uh, dim reasons and they, so they had to create some sort of bridge table. And uh, so I thought that was interesting uh, overall in, in terms of how they tried to solve this problem. Uh, their focus here is on eviction data. So they were kind of looking at uh, when evictions occurred as kind of the fact and different information around that. And then from there, they, they added some dimensions like neighborhood, uh, date, location, uh, district. The point of this is one, they put together a great project, I think. They took the time to pull out the CSVs, which you can actually look at here. And now I'm a little less interested in the project itself, more just showing you guys the fact that this is a data source that you can look at. So we can actually go to um, data SF and find this data set. And from here, you can look into how you can either export it again with CSV or CSV XL. So that's one option. You can download it manually, which in theory, you could just set up something to uh, download this link by hitting this button essentially, because this is just a link. So that's one way you could export this into a CSV. They also look like they have an API endpoint that you could hit. So let's see if I look this up. Oh yeah, so this is also great. So you can just scrape from this JSON pretty easily where it gives you kind of this neighborhood information and eviction ID and things of that nature. And then I think they ended up personally joining it to some other information. 
as far as like demographics go. But again, easy to scrape. Eviction data is not the nicest data to think about, but I just wanted to show you how some other people are, are looking at this data, how they're combining it with other data sets. Data SF probably has some of the better data exportability in terms of other government sites that I've worked with. Maybe that's because all the tech people are there. I don't know, but you can find a lot of information here. I'm curious suddenly about open bids. Um, what kind of open bids this is. Open bid opportunities sourced from citywide financial system. Uh, I'm curious if this is like request for a proposal because as a consultant, that's something that we do. Um, so I'm curious if that's what I am looking at. So let me look at this data. Yeah, it does look like it's some sort of request for a proposal data. But as you can see, there's tons of information here that you can scrape. And again, SF does a great job of actually making it very accessible to the end user. So check out that for one of your first data sources for your data engineering project. Next, let's look at real estate. So in particular, there's a ton of data on real estate. In fact, all really Zillow is when you actually look at it, or at least from what I understand, is it's really just often scraping information from MLS sites and then using it and repackaging it and reselling it. That's what's really interesting that I think that a lot of people don't realize. There's essentially just a bunch of data engineering projects out there that all they really do is take government data or something similar that's very messy and difficult to work with and create some sort of layer on top. And then we pay money for it or their ads or something similar to that. So in this case, Patrick put together a list of different APIs that you can pay for essentially to connect to MLS data. So it's basically real estate data. Most of the time you will have to pay for this. I think I found one that was decently affordable. Let me go below. I think Simply Rets was kind of cheapish. Um, in the $99 range. And I know that maybe that's expensive for some people, but the other one I was looking at was like $1,000 a month. I'm sure that this comes with other limitations. Like maybe you're not getting as much information. So that's why it's cheaper, but it's kind of cool. You know, you can get some information on residential listings, condo listings, and all of this other information and then repackage it, do some sort of analytics on it. You know, $99 compared to several thousand dollars for college tuition. You know, if you've got a good project in mind, why not do it? So that's another place you can look into. And this whole link going back to what Patrick put together is basically just a bunch of real estate APIs. And on top of that, he also references different things like Zestimates that you can connect to and those APIs and, and all this other information. So this is really just a big list of real estate data APIs that you can pull from. They've got uh, mortgage rates here as well. So yeah, so a bunch of API endpoints you could pull from, scrape from. Um, I'm actually curious about the Zestimates. Let me, let me check out what information gets here. Now, just quickly looking over all of this, you will notice that there are some strict or not, maybe not strict, but there are some rules on using this API. In terms of using Zillow's kind of Zestimate API system, it looks like. But another data source you might be interested in scraping for your next uh, data analytics project. And in fact, you can even find an example of someone scraping this project here. I'll link it in my YouTube again. Like you don't have to go to my Medium article to find this, but you can find this here. And again, someone else who already has done a lot of the work. So if this interests you, you can kind of look at their work and work backwards from there. Okay. So for the third data source, you know, the United Census Bureau has always had a lot of data that's super accessible. This is something that I've definitely looked into multiple times and pulled from multiple times, often more to prove a point. Like maybe sometimes you're just trying to uh, get some data on a certain topic because you want to prove someone else wrong, but you know, super accessible here as well. I think the one thing that sometimes is hard is like, what data do you want to look at? Uh, there's just so much data that they'll have. And a lot of it is like very high level. And that's usually not stuff I want to look at, but it has a ton of useful information. And like referenced earlier, you can pretty much just find the link here and scrape it that way. Like this TXT file just goes to a raw, essentially TXT file online. And then the only thing that you need to change is this 2019. And in fact, I'm curious if I just change this 2000 to 2018. Nope. That didn't work. I was hoping that that would work. Ah, there we go. Perfect. And so you can even find the next file pretty easily. So you can create a very easy scraper here, right? That goes and goes back through history. You don't have to know all the links. You just have to know the main URL essentially for some of these things. And yeah, you've got a ton of data here on information in this case about school district estimates in terms of like population and things of that nature. And then they've got even more probably in-depth information so you can break it down specifically by state. And so that's a lot of useful information. You could then package together, you know, scrape it and, and maybe package it with other information. Like we just have that Zillow information. You can now kind of put it together with this school estimate information, try to get those districts somehow. Uh, you have to bridge that district somehow. I'm not sure with a middle table so you can figure out maybe what district fits in what zip code or something. 
and then join that with your Zillow data and then maybe find some interesting information there. And that's kind of a tiny project right there. Another database that's open again from government data is the consumer complaint database. They pretty much make this data pretty open so you can actually look into it and they give you a ton in terms of consumer complaints. It's not just about like products. There's also some stuff about like debt collection, credit reporting and other issues from a financial standpoint. You can even list this out and see what issues kind of come up against what company. And if you want to manually export, they've got that, but you can also look into uh, more of like their API and, and working with their database a little more closely. Again, this is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So in this case, it's interesting looking at the financial issues that come up. So I'm just curious if I look into some of these different types, like I'm curious about money transfers, virtual currency or money. Do they give you money was not available when promised? managing opening or closing your mobile account fraud or scam. So yeah, so you can look into some interesting um, cases as far as like what's going into what companies. So you could probably do some interesting analytics there on if there are specific trends for specific companies that are more likely to have specific types of fraud. You know, maybe this is something that like CoffeeZilla could look into and do a whole project on in terms of, you know, uh, his love of looking at fraud. So I think there's a huge project here that you could definitely uh, go into and scrape a lot of this data and um, just analyze it. So this is another, again, fourth great data set that you can look into that has tons of information that you can really scrape and learn a lot about, again, in this case, financial fraud. And again, you could tie that into some sort of state data or maybe a company data in maybe like 10Ks or something like that. Again, I'm just trying to think of different sources that can really inspire you to do your next data project. And finally, we looked into a project where someone used just data sources from online. So RSS feeds, for example, as well as just general news sites, they did everything from like proxy pools to try to like make sure that they weren't uh, running into some sort of anti-scraping measures. And they really set up a pretty intricate project that not only essentially, again, scraped a bunch of news and online articles, but also created a layer for an end user to actually work with that data. And so this is an interesting project because the data source is really like whatever you decide it to be. You create your own RRS feed, then you can kind of pick what your data sources are. And so I really liked how they did this project because again, they were kind of just scraping generally. They weren't like focused on one specific topic. They're like, I want to scrape tons of articles and then, you know, give them to an end user. I mean, it's essentially just a search engine of sorts, you know, not as fancy again as Google, very much a simpler project overall, but I think a great example of how you can take data engineering and do all the scraping and then turn it into something. And that's where I'm currently going with this. I'm currently working on outlining a larger data engineering project. Um, I'm going to set up the goal here shortly. Uh, again, now that we've got some data sources going, I've got a few ideas in terms of what we're going to put together. This was kind of, again, a video zero for you guys. So hopefully inspiring you guys to look for different data sources, as well as to inspire you in terms of what people are doing with these data sources. I think that's what's kind of hard in terms of like that final hurdle you need to step over. It's like, okay, I just don't have an idea. Hopefully this just inspires you. It's like not just data sources, but also ideas of what people are doing with these data sources. And I also want to take a moment to thank Clint, who is working as a data engineering intern at Seattle Data Guy. He's been doing a great job, not just in terms of doing the normal consulting work, but creating content. He helped me put together this list. He also helped me put together the previous project list. And so just need to give thanks where thanks is due. So thank you so much for everyone also who's watched this video this far. Again, I'm really excited to build this project. I'm hoping that we'll have some sort of externally facing dashboard based off of a few data sources. I think I'm planning to scrape uh, the retail data and a few other government sets of data. Um, we'll see what happens. So thank you guys all for watching. I really do appreciate your time and I will see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.